Welcome to Westside Barbell Audio Articles. Today's article, Westside Mass Production, circa 2018. Author, Louis Simmons. Westside is famous for its max effort, ME, workout, and using the dynamic method for speed or explosive strength. But Westside also uses the third scientifically proven method, the submaximal effort method. This method requires the lifter to develop maximum force possible while in a fatigued state, but not to complete failure. More can be found in the book Science and Practice of Strength Training by V. M. Zatsorsky and W. J. Kramer. By using several special workouts, Westside has produced 10 600-pound raw bench pressers, including the late great Nick Winters, with a 700-pound raw bench. The 10 include Nick Winters, Kenny Patterson, George Halbert, Rob Fussner, J.M. Blakely, J.L. Holum, Paul Keyes, Mike Wolf, A.J. Roberts, and Dave Hoff. They had several special workouts they rotated on both ME Day or on Dynamic Day. Avoiding accommodation by changing the reps, angles, and grips is key to success. Two workouts were used in place of the Dynamic Method. They used two workouts for the repeated effort method. First, Let's look at a program that was shared with me from Bill Sino, a Chicago powerlifter and high-caliber bodybuilder who won many Best Chest Awards. It called for using a very wide illegal grip. You start with six sets of six reps and a weight that is fairly easy so as to jump five or ten pounds each week for three to five weeks until it's almost impossible to complete. At this point, reduce the weight and start over with eight sets of eight reps. Again, Add 5 or 10 pounds a week until you find it almost impossible to complete. Again, reduce weight and start over with 10 sets of 10 reps. Work up for a few weeks until you again cannot add weight. Now it is time to return to 6 sets of 6 reps. You'll find that your plateau is now much higher. Repeat the sequence. This program brought my raw bench from 340 pounds at 172 body weight to 450 pounds at 175 body weight to 500 pounds at 197 body weight. This has worked very well for some at Westside. Thank you, Bill Sino. The second workout calls for a high volume dumbbell workout using at least two angles. After warming up with lighter dumbbells, choose three weights to test yourself for three sets of eight to 10 reps of pressing two angles. Two examples are flat incline or seated decline. Your goal is to set a single set rep record and a three set record for total reps. I was no match for our 600 pound plus benchers, but my best with 155 pounds was 13, 11, 9. With 125 pounds, I managed 23, 21, 19 reps on a flat bench. Most will have to rest about six minutes between sets. Remember, you must choose the second angle you may not be able to use the same dumbbell weight while doing flat or reclined pressing compared to seated or inclined pressing. Let's look back at the six, eight, 10 set of reps for comparison from doing nine sets of three reps on speed strength day. When using 225 pounds for nine sets of three reps, it adds up to 6,075 total volume. When doing six sets of six reps with 225 pounds, it adds up to 8,100 pounds of volume. And when doing eight sets of eight reps, now the volume is 14,400 pounds. And 10 sets of 10 reps with 225 pounds would be 22,500 pounds of total volume. 225 pounds can be done by the majority of lifters, but think when you become stronger. 315 pounds for 10 sets of 10 reps will be commonplace, that's 31,500 pounds. After building a base from the high reps, you can concentrate on doing just one top set of six, eight, or 10 reps per week. Try a new single rep record with an ultra wide grip every three weeks. Then reduce weight and work up to a max close grip record. The close grip should be with the index finger touching the smooth part of the bar. This second workout is much less volume, but you reach a one rep max much faster than doing the high reps. Chest flies and a lot of tricep work is very important while doing this program. Here is a dumbbell workout. Using dumbbells is a fast way to build muscle mass. Remember the three set system? Don't forget to choose a second angle for three more top sets. 
Afterwards, do front, side, and rear delts. Upper back and lat work will conclude the workout. For building mass, do incline and decline work. Work up to a single three or six rep max. Then go to a second angle. For example, incline first and then go to the decline press. The next time, do the decline first and then incline. My best very steep incline press was 370 pounds close grip. Then I broke a record with 315 pounds, then 275 pounds, and last, 225 pounds. Follow a workout that compares to this. Then, do as much tricep extensions as possible finishing with side, rear delts, and upper back. Two more strength and mass builders are dips and push-ups. Dips with body weight or with weight, when possible, will build a strong chest, delts, and arms. Do full dips first with different grips. For extra strong triceps, point knuckles towards each other. To overload, stand on a box and do weighted dip lockouts. As you become stronger, add weight or lower box. My good and very strong friend, Jesse Kellum, would hand walk on a special set of 80-foot dip bars to build tremendous pressing power. One final note, press at all angles from flat to seated to even standing up. What about the lower body? How can you add volume to your lower back? Start with reverse hypers. If your squat is 400 pounds, we have found that you need 4,800 pounds of squat volume. Westside also has found that your reverse hyper volume is four times your squat volume. This means 20,000 pounds for a 400 pound squat and 40,000 pounds for an 800 pound squat. A 1,000 pound squat requires 48,000 pounds of reverse hypers two times a week. Plus, two days a week, preferably, one half the volume with 50% of the weight on your two lower body days. As you can see, adding reverse hypers to your program can increase the volume for your lower back, glutes, and hamstrings. The Athletic Training Platform, ATP, is a major part of the programming for higher volume for the lower body. Belt squatting is the base of our squat and pulling power that includes the Olympic poles. Enormous tonnage can be used with the ATP. A combo squat and deadlift performed on the ATP has made it possible for 25 800 pound deadlifts plus over 900 pound belt squats. Power cleans and snatches are done for the upper back. The reverse hyper and the ATP provide spinal traction while making the lower body strong. They played a large role in making it possible for 92 men who have squatted at least 800 pounds. A third method to raise volume for strength as well as restoration is power walking with a weight sled. To begin, hook the sled strap to your power belt and walk forward and backwards for trips of 60 yards. Walk with a long stride heel first. This should feel like the start of a calf ham glute raise. Use heavy weight on Monday and make 8 to 10 trips. The track girls at Westside use 180 to 235 pounds for their trips. Backward walking will hit the quads and hips in the front very hard. On Wednesday, drop your weight to 45 to 60 pounds and make 8 to 10 trips. On Friday, use 2 plates or 90 pounds and make 6 trips for a warm-up before squats and pulling. If your hips are weak, hook the sled straps around your ankles and walk with long as possible steps, which will build the hips. Sled work does not require loading the spine while adding volume to the training. Well, there you have it many ways to build muscle mass for the upper and lower body. Some of this work can be on a second small workout or take a short 30 minute break and do the extra special work noted above. While it is perfectly all right to do compound exercises for the upper body at any angle, the lower body training cannot sustain the constant compression on the spine. For this reason, single joint exercises like the reverse hyper should fill the void for lower back training. The ATP has a similar effect on training by constantly reducing spinal pressure by having the belt secured around the waist. The belt also helps increase intra-abdominal pressure, IAP, which protects the spine. One last note on back safety. As the barbell load increases, it is advisable to wear a weight belt. In the Science and Practice of Strength Training by VM Zatsiorski and W.J. Kramer, 2006, they show on page 150 Figure 7.15, the amount of IAP with no belt, an Olympic weightlifting belt, and a special belt with abdominal support, much like a 4-inch powerlifting belt, which was designed by Zatsiorski. This is scientific research to prove why you should wear a belt.
Read it for yourself. Always train your abs. Louie